team, I hope you're all well. I do apologize for the lack of videos recently. I have been particularly unwell with a really bad chesty cough. I still have it, so my voice probably sounds a little bit weird. Um, and there might be quite a bit of choppiness in this video while I stop to have a cough. Um, but I wanted to get back to filming. I'm behind on quite a few videos now and I just wanted to get back to it. So we are here today to do a haul and a little bit of an unboxing. I do have three boxes here, one from Illumicrate, Fairly and Owlcrate Junior. And then I have 47 books to go through as well. So this is a February haul. I know. I'm, I'm going to do better in March. I'm telling you now, I'm going to do better in March. We're, we're at March 7th, I think, today. And I haven't purchased anything yet, so we're doing well. <laughs> I am planning on going to the bookshop on Thursday, though, so there is that. Um, but I have a several different piles, one of which is a pre-order pile, another one is a manga pile, gifted pile, special editions pile, and then books that I just wanted to buy. Um, so I'm going to go through my pre-orders first and tell you what I pre-ordered and what came, because I do have quite a few pre-orders throughout the year, so I'm hoping that other than the bookshop trip on Thursday, um, all I will get this month for March is pre-orders. Fingers crossed, because I've really got to sort myself out. Look at the state of these shelves. I have zero room for any of these books on these shelves. I'm not even kidding. You should see the state of my middle grade shelves. <laughs> bloody awful so let's go through this rather short stack of pre-orders shall we so the first one i have got is immortality a love story by dana schwartz i haven't read the first one yet which is anatomy but i am very excited about it because i've heard good things and i'm intrigued by it um so this is a love story I'm not going to read the synopsis on the basis that it's the second in the series, but um, I am intrigued by both of them. So I did want to make sure that I got the matching hardcover for Anatomy um, because I didn't want to miss out on that. Because obviously in the UK, once the paperback comes out, the hardcover tends to come out of print and it's difficult to get hold of without paying through the nose for it. So... I did get the hardback while I could. Next, I do have The Adventure Zone, The 11th Hour, which is volume five. This is so much more chunkier than the rest of them. It's absolutely massive, but I'm very excited and it does look like this is not going to be the last one. They always do this at the end, so I can, very quickly I can find out if it's gonna be the last one or not. Um, the Adventure Zone is a graphic novel series, which is basically a D&D &D campaign in graphic novel format. And you have every now and then the um, master or whatever the hell he's called, the guy that runs a D&D &D campaign. I've, I don't follow D&D &D at all, but I do find this entertaining. Where is he? Why am I finding it so difficult to find a clip with him in? Oh, there he is. Um, for example, he will just jump in and have a chat with the characters part way through the campaign and it's great fun. I have a really good time with it. I know it doesn't gel with everybody, but despite the fact that I don't follow d and I just have a really good time on the adventures with the char these characters. So glad to have that one. Then I did get a, a Good Day to Pie, even, by Misha Pop, which is the second in this series. The first one was Magic Lies and Deadly Pies, and I absolutely love it. This is a cosy mystery, basically following a young woman called Daisy. Yeah, and she basically bakes a little bit of murder into all of her pies. Um, she's a little bit like a vigilante. She's only hurting people that hurt others. And I really enjoyed the first one. So I was very keen to make sure that I got a copy of this one to match the first one. And I'm really excited that I did. And it is on my March TBR for this month. So I'm hoping to get to this one this month. Then I did get Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. Tessa Bailey is one of my um, autobi authors and I love her books and I am looking forward to this one. It's a steamy new rom-com about a starchy professor and the buddy neighbour he clashes with at every turn. So I am looking forward to this one. It sounds great and I've heard good things so far as well. So looking forward to picking this one up. I'm not going to go through the synopses of all of these because we'll be here forever because there's so many books, but I will obviously, as I have been doing, briefly tell you what they're about. Then I got She is a Haunting by Trang Than Tran. I think that's how you pronounce that. I'm not sure. And this is a horror, riveting debut from a remarkable new voice, um, weaves an impressive gothic mystery. And I'm intrigued by this one. This cover is absolutely stunning. So I'm very excited to give this one a go. Um, 
intrigued. And then the final pre-order I have here is The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. This is a thriller, uh, basically following several authors. Five attendees are selected for a month-long writing retreat at the remote estate of Rosa Vallo, the controversial high, controversial high priestess of feminist horror. Alex, a struggling writer, is thrilled. Upon arrival, they discover they must complete an entire novel from scratch and the best one will receive a seven-figure publishing deal. Alex's long-extinguished dream now, now seems within reach, but the woman... But then the women begin to die. Trapped, terrified, yet still desperately writing, it is clear there is more than a publishing deal at stake at Blackbriar Estate. Alex must confront her own demons and finish her novel to save herself. Uh, it sounds very intriguing, so I'm looking forward to giving this one a bash as well. Then the stack of books that I did just purchase, just cause. Don't even with me because I can't even with myself. Uh, first up, I did get a collection of five Marvel novels from a um, car boot sale that me and Andy went to with his stepdad and niece. And these were only three pound. And I thought, why not give them a go? I've never heard of them before. So we've got Avengers Infinity War, The Cosmic Quest. This is volume two though, which is a little bit annoying. So I'm gonna have to see if I can hunt down volume one. Then we have Guardians of the Galaxy, The Hero's Journey, which is intriguing. Then we've got Captain America, obviously a hero's journey. They're all called The Hero's Journey. They're just following a different hero for each one. I've got Doctor Strange and I've also got Thor. So I am intrigued about those. I don't know how well they'll do as books, to be honest, but I just thought they were a fun little quirky thing. Maybe I could do a video surrounding them if anybody's even asked about something like that. I love Marvel, so just let me know in the comments down below. Then I did get Things We Hide From The Light by Lucy Score, which is the second one to the Things We Never Got Over series. And I really loved that book. I gave it five stars. It was my favourite book of February. Uh, Police Chief Nash Morgan is known for two things, being a good guy and the way his uniform accentuates his rear end. <laughs> I'm so excited about this one, following Nash and Lena, who are two characters that we come across in the first book. So I'm really, really excited about this one and I'm excited about the announcement of the third one as well. I don't know why it's taken me so long to get to these books. This is a chunky boy for a friggin' romance as well. Very chunky. Um, that's a bonus epilogue. Almost 600 pages, 574 pages, which is very chunky for a romance. Then I did get Hide and Seeker by Daka Herman, which is a book that I've seen on Jade Shells for ages. And I know her and Gav enjoyed this one. It is a horror, a middle grade horror. And they've both enjoyed it, but it's really difficult to come across now and buy. So I managed to get it off of eBay and I'm really looking forward to giving this one a go. Um, Justin knows something is wrong with his best friend. I went up the hill. Z went missing for a year and when he came back, he was different. Nobody knows what happened to him. The hill was muddy. At Z's welcome home party, Justin and the neighbourhood crew play hide and seek, but it goes wrong, wrong very wrong. Stomped my toe. One by one, everyone who plays the game disappears, pulled into a world of nightmares come to life and made it bloody. Justin and his friends realise this horrible place is where Z has been trapped and all they can do now is hide from the seeker. Should I wash it up? Intriguing. Very excited to give that a bash. Um, then while I was down at Jade's, I did go to Dial Lane, which is an indie bookstore down near hers. And I've seen, I picked this book up and thought about picking it up before and then put it back on the shelf. And then when I went again, it was still there. So I've decided to pick it up. And it is Loveless by Alice Oseman, but this is the illustrated American hardback edition. And it's absolutely beautiful. I just love this cover. Now I have already read this book but I really, really enjoyed it. And I thought, why not treat myself to the American hardback cover? Because it's just really, really pretty. I don't know if you can see that embossment on the front there. Um, so I'm really excited to have this because I can give it a reread if I ever feel like it, or it can just sit and look pretty on my shelves because why not? A bit rude not to, that's for sure. Um, then I also picked up Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert, another auto by author for me. This is a YA romance, I'm fairly certain. Could you brave the wilderness with your highly suspicious and unfairly cute ex-best friend? I think this has got like a true crime element to it in the sense that one of them is a fan of true crime. Um, and they go camping and some weird things start happening. So, conspiracy theory even, not true crime. Close. 
but well actually not <laughs> it's very very different <laughs> conspiracy theory obsessed um so yeah looking forward to that one I did get Wind Daughter by Joanna Ruth Mayer, which is the second one to Echo North, which I read for Polathon in February and absolutely loved. So I did want to make sure that I got a matching copy of the hardback for... Actually, I don't own Echo North in hardback. That's frustrating, but it is what it is. So... Yeah, I did get Wind Daughter, which will continue, I assume, continue on the story. In this heartbreaking and hauntingly beautiful companion novel to Echo North, a young girl must find her courage and fight the Winter Lord to become the legendary North Wind. There we go. Um, then I did get three books, which are Finley Donovan is finley donovan is killing it finley donovan knocks him dead and finley donovan jumps the gun in hardback because i lost i don't know if anybody saw this but i absolutely lost my shit about the fact that the paperback for finley donovan jumps the gun is ridiculously larger than the first two books and i was really really annoyed about it so i hunted down the hardbacks i'm gonna get rid of my paperbacks i'm a little bit annoyed about it because it's excess money i didn't really need to spend but the hardbacks are really pretty so i did get the first two which i have already read and then the final one which i am reading in march and i'm very excited to do so this is a series that follows a woman called finley donovan she's a newly divorced um single woman mother um and she is also an author and one day she's going having a meeting with her publisher she's having a meeting with someone to do with her book and she is mistakenly taken for a hit woman and by a woman listening in behind her booth because she writes thrillers she's mistakenly taken for a hit woman and a note um is then given to her with a sum of money for taking out this man and she finds herself in the bizarrest most unremarkable situations and it's just fantastic and i absolutely love the series it's very funny and um just the situation she ends up in are completely un unbelievable but hilarious at the same time and i love it so very excited to finish this series off i don't know if this is actually the final one or not but it's the final one out so yay and then the last one that i did just purchase for myself for the sake of it that isn't manga obviously um is the world we make by nk jemison which is the sequel to the city we became i absolutely love that book the audio for it is fantastic and i would highly recommend listening to the audio basically this is a sci-fi story of new york city the different i don't know if you call them provenances or something within different districts within New York City are all alive and they end up in a fight against each other for reasons. It's very bizarre but it's so well done and the audiobook is fantastic and I would highly recommend it. So very excited to get the sequel for this duology and hopefully pick it up very very soon. Then we have a whole bunch of manga here. Most of these are series continuations to be honest that I already own and I have started. So we do have volumes 5 to 10 of Witch Hat Italia which is a fantasy manga series this series starts off following a young girl called coco who really wants to be a witch um and one day something happens at her home that sees her being taken by a witch and uh, he basically makes the decision to help train her up and uh, he also has three other students that he's training um and so we follow the four of them plus the guy that's helping her and I really enjoy it it's just very cozy and I really enjoy the story and stuff so I'm having a good time with this series I did binge a couple of them in a video recently and I wanted to make sure that I had the rest I am now up to date volume 11 comes out soon I think later on this year so I'm looking forward to continuing on with this one and being able to binge the series another series that I did get so that I can binge it is Dreaming Sun volumes 1 to 10 um this one I already had volumes 1 to 5 however volume 8 is physically impossible to get hold of right now it's out of it's out of um publication completely it's physically impossible to get a hold of and you end up paying through the nose for the rest of them so it was cheaper for me to buy volumes one to ten than it was for me to buy try and track down volume six to ten uh, so i just went out and bought the rest and i can sell on my volumes one to five that i already own um i did recently read volumes three and four so i am excited to continue on with this series i have now read 
these out of the series and I can continue on with the rest. That last one is a chunky boy as well. Um, but yeah, very excited to continue with this one. It is a cosy contemporary about a young girl whose um, mother has passed away. Her dad has remarried and they have a new baby and she's feeling a little bit excluded and one day she comes across this guy who's asleep on a bench. She thinks he's homeless but he's not. Basically he asks three things of her. Um, one of them is to tell him what's wrong and what's the matter, why she ran away from home. The other one is to locate his keys. He knows exactly where they are but she, he wants her to go and get them and the third one is to fall in love and uh, she basically ends up moving in with him and a couple of other guys that she goes to school with. Uh, however, he is quite a bit older and it is a very strange dynamic. Don't get me wrong, the series is not perfect. I've been rating it like three stars so far. I just enjoy it. It's nice to break up some of the heavier stuff that I've been reading um, and it is a nice palette cleanser, but it isn't perfect. It is ever so slightly problematic with the age gap and stuff, but um, I'm hoping that some of that will get cleared up as we go further into the series, but otherwise very excited to have it. So excited to have a complete series now as well. And then three others that I did get. Um, I got my cute little kitten by Milk Morinaga. And this one is... Uh, Rena has a crush on her roommate, Yuna, since college. But Yuna has never noticed. One night, Yuna brings home a tiny kitten, even though their apartment doesn't allow pets. Rena decides it would be better to let Yuna find her own place. But when Yuna says she wants to stay with Rena forever, Rena's feelings are forced to the surface. Can Rena make Yuna understand what being together forever really means? Um, so it sounds like this kitty is going to bring these two girls together, and I'm really here for it. So very excited about that one. Then I did get Blue Flag Volume 1. I've heard of this one before. Uh, love is already hard enough, but it becomes an un unnavigable maze for unassuming high school student Taichi Ichi knows and his shy classmate Futaba Kuz when they begin to fall for each other after their same sex best friends have already fallen for them. Uh, for some reason, Tai Chi just can't stand Futaba, but at the start of his third year in high school, he finds himself in the same homeroom as her, along with his childhood friend Toma, a star athlete. But one day, Futaba opens up to Tai Chi and admits she has a crush on Toma. She then asks for his help in confessing to him. There's just one problem. Toma seems to already have a crush on somebody else. Interesting. It sounds like this could end up being like a love triangle, maybe looking forward to that and then i also got polar bear cafe volume one this sounds adorable and looks really really cute it's basically the story of a polar bear opening up a cafe for other animals look at those pandas i'm so here for this and i think it will be adorable for the next polathon so i did get it for that reason uh so that is all of my manga um so let's go into gifted books before i go into special editions and unboxings this could end up being a long video i do apologize so for Valentine's Day, I did get Source Line from my lovely friend Georgie. So thank you, Georgie, for this one. This is a graphic novel that I've had my eye on for a while. It's not long since come out. For as long as she can remember, Source Line has loved studying mythical creatures. Now a student at Professor Archibald Balzar's prestigious school of cryptozoology. <laughs> She's eager to test her knowledge and earn her spot of one, as one of Balzar's apprentices, but when one of her classmates suddenly disappears, Sourceline finds herself on a journey far darker and more personal than she expected. Um, it looks adorable. Adorable. Maybe not. Um, but it looks really, really good and I'm very excited for it. So looking forward to that one. Then Claire did want to add a romance book to my shelves and she did send me the rom-com agenda by Jane Denker. This sounds really, really good and I'm very excited about it. So thank you Claire for sending this to me. Beach Read meets when Harry met Sally in this love letter to classic rom-com movies and anyone who has ever pined for the wrong person. Sign me the fuck up. I love Beach Read by Emily Henry and I love, love, love when Harry meets Sally. It's a great film. So I'm very excited about this one. Thank you, Claire, for sending me that. Claire also sent me Twisted by Emily McIntyre, which is the fourth book in the Never After novel series. Um, the first one is a Peter Pan retelling, which I have read. And now don't know the location of. Um, but it was very, very, oh, it's up there somewhere, I'm sure, hooked. I loved it. It was great. Um, and I do have Scarred and also Wretch down there as well. Scarred is a Lion King retelling, I think. Can't remember what Wretched is. I think. 
is it Wizard of Oz or something? I don't remember. Um, but then we have Twisted as well. She's his diamond in the rough. He's her worst nightmare. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Not sure what the retelling is in this one, to be honest. But I'm really looking forward to it. Very excited. Again, thank you, Claire, for adding this one. And then the third one has come directly from the author. So it is Out of Touch by Michael Sorais. I think that's how to pronounce your name, Michael. I'm sure I did this the first time around. I do apologize. Michael is the author of All My Friends Are Rich. And I did read his book when it first came out uh, a couple years ago now, if I remember correctly. Um, he sent me a copy of it uh, and I read it before it came out and it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. This one is a YA coming of age queer novel as far as I am aware. Seeing you was worth it, you will always be worth it. Uh, from the author of All My Friends Are Rich comes the romantic tale of Vincent and Teddy who find each other online at the dawn of social media. Perfect for fans of Alexis Hall and Adam Silvera. I'm very intrigued by this one. It sounds really, really good. And this will be released on September 19th, so keep your eyes open. I will be reading it before then and reviewing it but i'm very very excited thank you michael for sending me this one with your cute little note i appreciate thank you very much so then we get into some special editions and then a couple unboxings i will try and fly through those unboxings because this has been a long video already the first special edition i do have is fair Loot's heart of the sun warrior by Sulin tan which is the sequel to daughter of the moon goddess which i absolutely loved this is a ya if I remember correctly, a uh, fantasy story about a woman whose mother is banished to the moon and she's trying to free her mum. And I really enjoyed the first one and I am planning on reading this one and finishing the series off um, in March. It's full of Chinese mythology and it's absolutely fantastic and I loved it. Look how pretty this book is. Um, the inside end papers and under the dust jacket don't know if you can see that properly there we go uh very very beautiful edition and i'm really excited that i did manage to get my hands on this one uh following on from daughter of the moon goddess they fit perfectly uh then i did get from illumicrate well after light which is the romance edition of illumicrate um love to loathe you loathe to love you even by ali hazelwood which is a collection of three stories um written by ali a collection of steamy stemist steminist novels um so we've got under one roof stuck with you and below zero plus an exclusive bonus chapter it's got some gorgeous blue sprayed edges um and it's really pretty book and it is signed by ali as well so i can add that to my collection with my other Ali Hazelwood books. I'm sure I have the others from Ali Hazelwood. Yeah, Love Hypothesis is up there and I've got Love on the Brain up here because I haven't read it yet. So looking forward to giving this one a read at some point. And then I did get the Illumicrate editions of Ninth House and Hellbent from Illumicrate. I just said that. Um, by... Lee Bardugo. I have read Ninth House. Absolutely loved it. Gave it five stars when I read it. I really want to reread it, but I think I'm going to wait until the third one comes out. I don't know how many books are going to be in this series, but I don't have to keep rereading them every time a book is released. So I think I'm going to wait, but I thought I would show you these. So this is the uh, Ninth House edition with the snake. On the back, we do have a compass. Absolutely beautiful. Very simplistic design. We do have some sprayed edges, but I don't know if this is going to show up on camera they are quite streaky they're not perfect which is a bit of a shame they are quite streaky but i don't know if anything can be done about that we'll have to see uh the end papers are stunning we have alex who is our main character in the book and underneath the dust jacket we have the snake again um and on the flip side, oh, it's Alex again. So very, very nice. Um, and then underneath for the Hellbent edition, we've got the rabbit. I actually prefer this to the original Hellbent cover because I think the original Hellbent cover is a little bit gross. I'm not going to lie. The the bald rabbit freaks me out. Something rotten. I thought it was something dead the first time I saw it till I figured out what was going on. Uh, sprayed edges again, just ever so slightly shrieky. I just don't know if it's can you see that line it's a bit of a disappointment but it is what it is a compass underneath and then we do have darlington who is our other main character on the flip side of this one there is the skeleton for the rabbit 
what we all want to see. Um, so yeah, I do love this series. It does say wealth, power, murder, magic. Alex Stern is back and the Ivory League is going straight to hell. Uh, this is a series that follows Alex Stern, who is a young girl. She finds herself in a secret society at university that she wasn't anticipating finding herself in. Darlington is our other main character and it is a very weird and twisty mystery magical very bizarre book but i absolutely loved it it's great and i had a good time with ninth house so i'm looking forward to continuing on with the series let us get into our unboxing shall we let's do this fairy loot box um it's been sitting around a little while not as long as the alcrate junior but it has been sitting around and this is the adult box so it is a voyager of chaos i have been looking forward to this book because i love this author's writing and i'm very excited to dive into this so this is the adventures of armani al sarif uh, by Shannon Chakraborty, S.A. Chakraborty, if you know her that way instead. Um, and this is absolutely stunning. I know nothing about this other than the fact that it's set in the same world as the Dave Abad trilogy, um, but it is pirates instead. That's literally all I know about it. Oh, <gasps> Shiza. Look how pretty. Okay. Oh my goodness, that map. Let me just put these other boxes down. I got really excited to open everything at once and I had them all on my knee. Okay, this map, these end papers are stunning. Look at that. That is beautiful. It is signed by Shannon. Oh, another map. So pretty. <laughs> Listen, I've seen the front and the back of the book. Kitty! Look at that. <laughs> this book is beautiful. This might be one of the most beautiful books now on my shelves. Absolutely stunning. And I'm so excited to give it a read. I know a lot of people are reading this in the month of March and I wish that I had the time to do so. A pirate of infamy and one of the most storied and scandalous captains to ever sail the seas. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I assume it's a female captain. Uh, so yeah, hyped about this one. And make sure you go check it out this edition is just stunning i think this is the first in a new series as well so looking forward to that too beautiful okay then illumicrate i'm not almost flashing my dress not sure what's in here oh okay uh, I do get the book only subscription from Illumicrate because although a lot of the things that you got in the boxes were beautiful I just don't have use for a lot of them and they end up lying around the library and making a mess really so I did jump to the book only subscription um, because it was just better I do miss out on like I miss the blankets and stuff most more than anything and the little you know the pots and all of that good stuff i do miss those but it is what it is okay so we do have the dear reader letter and then we do have the book which is song of silver flame light night by amelia wenzow i knew that this was coming and i know that jade has recently read this and i was so did, like um and an iron about whether or not to pick up a copy um but because i knew it was coming in the box i thought better of doing so but this is oh, really really pretty good lord that's beautiful it is signed by the author here are the end papers end papers are the same on the flip side guys holy shit oh my goodness jade is going to be hoping that i do not like this book <laughs> So that she can have it because that is really pretty she got the waterstones exclusive edition um with the orange sprayed edges and it was beautiful that's why i was on an hour and about whether or not to get it because the edges were gorgeous um but i decided not to in the end because i knew it was coming in the box oh that's a pretty map stunning so pretty uh in a fallen kingdom one girl carries the key to discovering the secrets of her nation's past and unleashing the demons that sleep at its heart interesting 
very excited about this, I'm not going to lie. I, I wasn't ridiculously excited about it when Jade got it, but she really enjoyed it. She ploughed through it in a day, so I am keen now. Very keen. <laughs> These are some gorgeous books. All right. <clears throat> Last but not least, Owlcrate Junior, which is a middle grade uh, subscription service from Owlcrate. And I do have a code for you if you're interested in looking them up. I'll leave a link to them in the description box down below with my code. But here is a code for you to get some percentage off. Um, and let's get into it. So this month's theme... Oh, it's on the side. This month's theme is Witches in Training. That's adorable. <laughs> this is the spoiler card, so I will keep a hold of that to tell me what's going on here. We have a delivery service to lunch tote. I'm going to assume this is Kiki's delivery service. Themed. Before I've even seen the spoiler card. Because. Looky here. That's adorable. And it does have, you know, the foiling inside to keep your food cool. That's really, really cute. It's a really nice size as well. Kids would love that for school. Love it. Um, okay, we've got Riddle's Tea Shop, Peppermint and Chocolate Spellorium Anti-Hex Blend. Pretty. I don't know. Oh, the inspired by the Apprentice Witch. Nice. It's also gluten-free, nuts, sugar, and dairy-free. And it's a decaf tea as well. Very nice. Maybe I'll try some of this later. Um, Lush. Oh, it's wooden fairy doors. <laughs> They're really cute. Oh, bless. I might keep those for when I have the library done. Because they will be really cute just to dot around the room. Especially for Thomas as well, actually. I might put some downstairs for Thomas, my nephew. Um, he would really enjoy those. Uh, then we did get our monthly pin as well. Our Crate Junior since last month have started doing monthly pins and I'm really excited about it. Uh, so this one is The Grace of Wild Things. Which is a very cute pin indeed. Pop that back in the box so I don't lose it. Then we have a recipe grimoire. Cute. Oh, adorable. <laughs> oh. I might definitely use this because I'm always wanting to write down recipes that I find and enjoy. That's such a good idea. That's really, really adorable. Very useful. Then we have, oh, it's a pen. <laughs> That's really cute. I would never get bored of this. Listen, I am a child at heart. I have ADHD. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, and then we do have the, before I get to the book, we've got the theme of March, which is family ties. And then we do have the book. Oh, the pin matches the book. I don't know how I didn't realise that in January. Um, the books always come wrapped as well to protect the book, which I think is great. Hang on, this is by Heather Fawcett. That's great news because I've recently just had a bit of trouble with her adult book. So <laughs> maybe her middle grade one will be better. I remember getting the recipe in the, in the January box as well. They're giving you recipes to put in your recipe book cute this all makes sense now a dear reader letter a signature and the book is the grace of wild things by heather fawcett this cover's stunning i just spent about two minutes talking to myself not realizing the camera wasn't recording i have read <laughs> good lord i have read even the darkest stars by heather fawcett before um and the sequel to it um and really enjoyed it and i know that jade has read ember and the ice dragons and the language of ghosts but i did struggle with emily wilde's encyclopedia of fairies which is her latest um adult book which came in a fairy loot box i did dnf that after about four pages it was the writing um it just wasn't for me so i am intrigued by this one uh to see what happens with it um 
Inspired by Anne of the Green Gables, this is a magical story of found, found family loss and the power of a girl's imagination. Intriguing. Very nice indeed. So I am looking forward to giving this one a go because I appear to be doing all right with Heather, Heather Fawcett if it's YA or middle grade. Uh, not so much if it's adult, but it is what it is. Um, so nice box from Owl Crate Junior there. Very impressed. So again, if you want to know more about Owl Crate Junior or any of the subscription services that I mentioned today, I will leave links to them in the description box down below. Like I say, I've got a discount code for Owl Crate Junior, so I'll leave that below as well. And that is all of the books that I hauled in February. And now I'm very, very tired. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, so yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Chat to me in the comments down below. Have you read any of these? Would you make any of them a priority? Um, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.